A few days ago, we took a look at the Grinderino frame, my foundation for my three and a half inch sub 250 build. Now I've done a full review on this one, talking about all the features and specs and what makes this one here so special for a sub 250 freestyle drone. I'll leave the video linked above and below so you can take a look at it. Having said that, let's take a look at the parts for today's build. Now starting with the heart of any drone is the flight controller. Today we're using the SpeedyB F405 mini stack. Now this one here is a pretty cool stack here for this build. It's light, it has a lot of features including Bluetooth, barometer, and even built-in memory to log your data. So this one here is pretty cool. It's one of the best bang for the buck flight controls on the market. I've also done a full review on this one. I'll leave a link below so you can take a look at it. Now connected to the flight control and ESC is the motors. Now today we are using the Fatec 1404T. These are 3850KV. So this is gonna be a 4S build. Now these were not my initial motors of choice. I did go for some T motors, 1604 motors. They're a little bit bigger, and I figured that would give you some more punch flying this drone. But one thing to note about this frame here is that these have 12 by 12 mounting holes for your motors. Now I did buy the 1604, which does have a nine by nine, and I did find out the hard way that these don't fit <laughs> this frame. So I had to go back out and buy some new ones. Now these are pretty premium uh, or pretty decent motors as well and we'll see how they work. They look really nice and this should complement the looks of this frame. Now moving on to the visuals of the drone and that's always a iffy part for me because that's very subjective. Today we're gonna go with HD Zero for this build here. It's a freestyle drone. We want some low latency and low and consistent latency. Now these things are very, very light and pack a pretty good punch. Now these have a maximum output around 200 milliwatts. And that's pretty good. Now there's some other options as far as HD Zero, like their Race VTX. They're a little bit, you know, heavier. This is one of the lightest and still produces the same output. Now there is the Freestyle VTX, but that's a larger VTX altogether and probably will not fit into this. Now there's some rumors that there's gonna be a smaller one what VTX coming shortly on the market. And maybe if I get that in time, I might stuff that in here. But for right now, we are gonna go with the Whiplight VTX and that should help us get our sub 250 gram weight limit. Now, as far as cameras here, I have two options. I have the Nano V2 and the Micro V2. Now these are pretty, almost, these are arguably the best cameras for the HD Zero system. Because I wanna get under 250 grams, I may opt for, I don't know, this nano camera here as well. Now to finish it up, we have some accessories here. We're gonna go with Express LRS as our receiver, tried and true, very light, very small, and has really good range and penetration, good for freestyle flying. So that's a no brainer. Besides that, we have an antenna here. We have a small light antenna here, and hopefully this one here works. I might do some A-B testing and see how it compares to the stock one that comes with the VTX. But this one here is the ORT antenna very very light made for like really like center whoops or tiny whoops this thing is super light but gives really good performance last but not least we have our propellers here we have our gem fan propellers we have two different colors in here these are three and a half inch propellers uh, obviously team mounted and I did buy two colors just in case I want to change the look of this drone altogether so that's it for all our parts here let's go to the bench and get all these things stuffed into this small little frame Okay, so here at the bench, we have our grind arena frame and all our parts to put into the frame here. Now there's some noise outside. We have a hurricane out there, so you're gonna hear some wind and some rain. So I do apologize for the audio in advance. Now the grind arena frame here comes with the hardware for the stack. It actually comes with both the M3. Well, I think the M3 is the default and you also have some M2 screws. The M2 screws are a little bit too short. Now the actual flight controller ESC stack also has some hardware as well and it also has both M2 and M3 hardware. I was gonna go for the M3 since it's a little bit more sturdy, a little bit bulkier, but that's gonna add to the weight. So we're just gonna go with the M2 since it's lighter. It's the same length as the M3. Now you have these bolts on here as well that sticks out a little bit and that could potentially touch your ESC. So make sure that you have it in the right orientation or you have proper clearance so it doesn't short out on the frame. Now we're gonna check that and see if there's any touching and that's the reason why we're doing this right now. And we're gonna go with the rear for now. And then the second one back here. We actually have clearance, a lot of clearance actually. It's gonna be hard to see in there, but we have a lot of space in between the actual ESC and that bolt. Now, if I flip the ESC around, it's gonna be a lot tighter, but this configuration here should be more than adequate. It looks pretty good. That mini stack is amazing, guys. 
let's take a look at the capacitor because that's gonna dictate if we have enough space. This is always the trickiest part of any installs where to put this capacitor. And now that I'm looking at all my other three and a half inch drones on the wall here, they all have the capacitor built into the leads. So that's probably a smart design by them. Here's our VTX, it is small. Actually, now that I think about it, it could fit. Um, this VTX is so flat, so low. I couldn't just mount it right on top. All right, this looks good. I'm just gonna solder this capacitor and battery lead to my ESC and go from there. Okay, so we have our capacitor and battery lead secured and soldered to our ESC. This looks really, really nice actually. This is the MIPI cable right here. So let's see if this is gonna fit and clear properly. So right now we have, actually we have all the gummies in here and I don't see any problems. Now it's gonna be a pain in the butt to get access to the MIPI cable, that's the only thing. So I'm content with this. So I wanna wire up my actual VTX and wire up my RX, my receiver. So I think we'll start with the actual VTX first. It's just four wires. We have ground voltage, RX and TX, and then we're just gonna wire this up to the actual flight controller since it's all out here. Now this is gonna be a pretty close, tight fit right here. As you can see, it's really close proximity to where the actual flight controller is gonna be. So these cables, aren't gonna be long, they're not gonna be very long at all. The cool thing here is that I'm using the Whoop Light VTX. This is a made for like a really small 1S drones. So the voltage runs between 1S and 3S. So just make sure you don't connect this VTX to the battery voltage, especially since this is gonna be a 4S drone. 4S is gonna be too much for this. So if you're gonna wire it straight to the battery, use a BEC. But this flight controller here has two voltages. It has a five volt pad or BEC and a nine volt BEC. And they're rated at both two and three amps. So more than adequate for this small little VTX here. I also could wire it to the five volt pad on here, but since there's a pad here made for digital VTX like DJI, I'm just gonna use the, I think this is a T1 and R1. So you're at one for this. Now these pads here are very delicate with HD0. I've used them before in the past and you have to be very gentle with uh, this whole VTX here. Okay, so we have our VTX here wired up here, and this is gonna be the first time ever for me in the build where I have to mount the actual VTX first. Now I'm gonna put the MIPI cable on here as well, because that's one of the reasons why we're doing this first. I don't know, I can't figure out yet if this is gonna be a pain in the butt to work on or, or repair maintenance wise. But for right now, it looks okay. Everything seems to be fine. And there you go. So now all I have to do is just measure the wire from my VTX to my flight controller. All right, so now that we have that figured out, I'm gonna connect the receiver first and then do the VTX to the flight controller last and then we should be good. Okay, so we have our receiver connected to our flight controller. We have our shrink wrap on here. I'll leave this for later so that in case I need to fix this, I can just flip it over, but it looks pretty good. Having said that, it's time to install the motors on here, measure the wires, and make sure that they're the, the right length for these wires here and this drone. This thing looks amazing. Check out these motors. And as I said before, this is a 12 by 12 mountain solution here on this frame. So that's one of the things that you have to be very cautious of when you buy your motors is make sure that you have the right mountain pattern here. Now this frame here was designed specifically for the Amagod actual motors. And at the time when I bought this frame, there wasn't any available. Now I think those have only two bolts to secure it but it was designed for that frame anyway, so it doesn't really matter. This is a standard mountain pattern here. All right, so let me just put all these four in there, cut and measure, and yeah, solder it on there.
All right, so we have our wires connected to the ESC. That looks all good. That turned out pretty clean, actually. It looks really, really good. Now I'm just gonna wire up my VTX straight to the flight controller, and that should be it, honestly. That's it. The last one, R goes to T. All right. As I always say when I build these drones, it's like whenever I'm finished soldering, it's a relief. All right, I need to <laughs> shrink wrap this. Okay, I think that's good. Let's put these bolts and nuts on here. That is looking amazing. Ooh, one more thing I forgot to do. That would have been, that would have been sad. This little jumper right here that connects the ESC to the flight controller. That needs to be input in here before I put the camera on. Look at that. Looks pretty good. So time for the camera. We're gonna go with the smaller one we said since it's same quality as the micro one. And I'm gonna keep the back plate off. <laughs> and I learned that I learned that the hard way. <laughs> I might regret it. Now I hope I have the orientation right. I think these you can reverse them in using the stick commands, even if you put it the wrong way. Alright, that one looks pretty good. Let's see if we can get the other side to go in. Alright, it doesn't look too bad. Let's see if we can put the top plate on there. And I think we're good. Wow. I can't believe this thing came together that quickly. Well, I had a few builds where there wasn't that many surprises. Everything kind of fell into place pretty good. All right, last but not least, here we are, come to the time. It's the props. What color should I go? Purple or green? The green looks pretty cool, but I think this one here looks more like a bot grinder, grinderino kind of color. Yeah, that's, that's the one right there. Actually, oh gosh, I just want to get it done because it looks so good, but I do need to put this tape on here. So here's my automotive tape. This thing is awesome. This thing is like cloth-like material. All right, all right, there it is. Let's put these props on there. Now, I think I will do a prop in. That works. <laughs> wow, that's close, bro. That is close. Perfect. All right, let's put these screws on here and uh, yeah, figure this out. All right, so here it is, the Grinder Reno in all its glory. This thing looks pretty good, guys. Look at this with the props on here. That looks good. All right, so this thing here is, I would say, 95% done. Um, I also do just put the battery mat on there and it actually matches the props on this. So this looks really good. The most important thing here is I'll have to print a TPU mount for my Express LRS antenna. This doesn't come with one, but that's easy. My 3D printer is right there. I'll just go online, try to look for one or try to make one or figure that out. Now I don't have one right here, but this might be, this is so wide, this might fit other drones. So I can put an action camera on here. I think I might want to do that. You know, HD0 is cool, but the resolution isn't the best on there, so I can put an action camera on there. Now, having said that, guys, this thing here is complete. Let's see if we came close to the 250 grams. So let me get the scale right here, and let's put this on here. 169 grams, that's not too bad. Let's put the battery mat on there. 172, and since we need a strap, this strap here is too small, so it's not really accurate, but there you go, 178. My lightweight antenna, which I need to put on here. Not bad, really light, okay? Now, the biggest thing here is the battery. Here's a 850 milliamp hour 4S battery, which is what I plan to use. 277, so that's too heavy. Now, I have my other 4S batteries right here. These are significantly lighter. Hoo, hoo, hoo. 248 grams so it looks like i'll be using this 850 this is also at 850 as well this is a tattoo r line 95c this one here is not a 95c this one here is a 60c so the c rating is a little bit lower on this one it is a xt30 and i have even a lighter one 234 grams i'll be using this one the most and seeing what my flight time and flight performance is with this and there you go there's your 200 or sub 250 Graham drone right here. So yeah, 
If you guys want to see the flight video of this Grinderino Sub 250 Freestyle Drone, hit that subscribe button. Therefore, you'll be notified whenever I do drop the second video for this drone. So anyways, thank you for sticking around this long and I will see you in the next video. Peace.